This is question number 26 on the integrated math 2 practice test, blah, 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 10 ready, blah, 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 subtest 3, subpart 3. Now, a quadratic function is given as 4x squared plus 8x plus 10. That's in standard form. You'll notice that all the, uh, f the exponents are in descending order. This would be x to the first, x to zero. Uh, write an equivalent function by inserting numerals 1 through 9 and operational signs into the vertex form given. So basically they want you to go from standard to vertex form. And there's a couple ways that you can do it. The algebraic way that you're probably used to doing um, involves remembering that the vertex form would be y or f of x, whatever you want to say, is equal to a times x minus h squared plus Okay, so the value in, and this is, by the way, ax squared plus bx squared, or bx plus c, not bx squared, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, so the value for a is the same, so 4 goes here and there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is find the points for h and k, and the h and k would be the vertex points. So this is positive, so it's going to look something like this. So we want to find this point here, because that's what the vertex form is built around. That's what's called vertex form. Anyway, with that being said, let's uh, do negative b over 2a, because that can get us our axis of symmetry. It gives us the line that splits the parabola into a nice symmetric half, so you can fold it over on itself, which also gives you the x component of your vertex, by the way. Anyway, negative b here would be negative 8. Always keep the signs. If this was negative 8, you'd put negative negative or plus 8. And then divide by 2 times 4. I'm sorry, 2 times 8 there. I was thinking ahead. Uh, negative 8 over 8 is equal to negative 1. So there's my x term. So for hk, for this one, it's negative 1. The only part that people struggle with, if they can get to there, is remembering that it's x minus h. It's the opposite of what you think it is. So um, when I substitute in a negative 1 here, so I have negative 1, and I want to put it right there, that makes negative negative 1, which is plus 1, of course. So make sure you put your plus 1 right there. So that's that part. Now. I want to find my uh, matching value for k. And really what we're going to do to find it is just know, to know what the value of the coordinate is at any point. If I know one of the, uh, if I know the x component of the coordinate, I can just substitute x in to this equation and find out what the matching y uh, coordinate is. So 4 times negative 1 squared plus 8 times negative 1. plus 10. Um, this is just 4 minus 8 plus 10. Negative 4 plus 10 gives you positive 6. Actually, I'm just going to put it down below. Right there. So, pretty easy stuff. That means that this is this. And for this, it's positive case. So if you put plus 6 in with plus 6, it just gives you plus. Six. So there's your answer to that one. It's not too difficult. 4 times x plus 1 squared. So it really looks like this. It's kind of cruddy writing. So there you go. Now, what else could you do? I mean, I don't, I'm running out of time, or I have, or I want to just check to see if it's correct. Something else you can consider doing, and I'm going to put this plus k back, is graphing it. I mean, if you have a graphing calculator, you could use it, and it'll save you, potentially save you time, as long as you know how to make proper adjustments to it. So I think my window is probably okay. So I'll just type in the 4x squared plus 8x plus 10, and I'll graph it. And I want to look specifically into where the vertex is. So let me 
change the window a little bit so it's easier to see my x I'm going to change my y minimum to 0 because it never actually hits the x-axis anyway and I'll change this to 15 who knows there we go so I want to know what this point is so I can find it you can trace it if you want by the way or you can find the minimum value it'll want to know where the I need to go through that part again so it'll want to know where the left bound is here the right bound is here that just means pick a point to the left of it pick a point to the right of it it's trying to hone in on the spot oh whoops There it is, negative 1 and 6. So it gives me that point there. What do I do with it? I'd substitute it right into this. And remember that this is negative h, so put it there. The real benefit of doing this is testing it. So say, for instance, I thought that um, it should be y is equal to 4 times x minus 1. So I'm incorrect, plus 6. So I found this, and then I thought, well, this is probably right. So I'll graph them. The first one's already done. But you can see the second one is not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be over here. So by making the second one, I know that I'm incorrect. So it's a quick way to um, check your answer. And then I think, oh, yeah, I forgot. It needs to be the opposite sign because of the, the way the formula is set up. So it'll make the first one, and then it'll cycle through. And as long as you haven't done something totally weird, it will show that it's just made the same thing again. So you can test your answer that way with the calculator, which is kind of a nice way to make sure that you're right. Choose the method that works best for you and stick with it.